Section 9.1, Molecular Shapes. If I give you a, a Lewis structure of carbon tetrachloride, and you have a picture here of carbon tetrachloride, it would look like this. We have carbon with four chlorines, and the chlorines each have three lone pairs. There are a valence electrons uh, around eight of, around chlorine, all the chlorines, and eight around the carbons. So this is a Lewis structure of carbon tetrachloride, but it doesn't show you three dimensionally what that element or what that compound looks like, and the shape will often determine what the properties are and what the reactivity are. Like what what will it react with and how does it react? A lot of that is dependent upon its geometry. So the, the Lewis dot gives you tons of information, but it doesn't give you what you really need, and that is its three-dimensional shape um, and size. So what you have here are some uh, models. These are uh, models. You've got a, first of all, this is called a tetrahedral. This first one is a tetrahedral. It's a, it's a four-sided figure, all of which are equilateral triangles. So four equilateral triangles put together, and you have um, you know the vertices on each on each side, and that's a tetrahedral. If you were to have the carbon embedded in the center of that, and the chlorines at each of the uh, each of the vertices of that tetrahedral, that is a tetrahedral shape. And what you see is that the experimental data has given a bond distance of 1.7 eight angstroms, okay, angstrom is uh, 10 to the 10th, so um, like one ten billionth or a tenth of a billionth of a, of a meter, something, you know, ridiculously small. That's how small the, the uh, bond angle is, or bond length is, and then the, the angle itself between a chlorine to a carbon to a chlorine, that angle is found to be 109.5. So if you take four carbons or four chlorines and say, okay, it's 90 degrees. Well, that would make sense. You could put that on a piece of paper, but if it was 109.5, 109, uh, you can't put that on the piece of paper because you can't make 109.5 four times because that's more than the angles in a circle. So you couldn't put it on one on a flat surface. It'd have to be three dimensional. And so we see that it is three dimensional. Uh, the, this is a ball and stick model here, this, this first one. You can see that the, you have this representation of the bond length. Um, this is called a space filling, a space filling model, which gives you more of an idea of how big each of the atoms are to each other. Uh, the, the bond is rather obscured, but you can see if, if one atom is smaller than another atom. That's a space filling model. So you've got some basic uh, shapes here depending upon what the construction of the molecule is. So I've got some generic here. I've got an AB2, which means the A is the central atom, and then I've got two other atoms connecting somehow to that central atom. So if you have O here as oxygen and carbon as, uh, as the black here, you could have something like carbon dioxide where you have an A, the carbon would be the A, and the oxygens would be the B, and you have two oxygens attached to one central A, the carbon here, that would be a linear. So if you have 180 degrees, so it's 180 degrees, that's called linear. If it's not 180 degrees, okay, so anything else, 180 um, degrees, it's not 180 degrees, then um, in this case it's called bent, and you have... Um, you can determine that, uh, you can determine this, um, we'll see it in a minute. If you have three things attaching to a central atom, then you have a, a generic AB3 uh, situation, and AB3 can have different shapes. You could have them all on the same plane, or you could have them more three-dimensional, like a triangle pyramidal. T-shaped would also be in, uh, in, you could put all those in the same plane. So, 
the whole point in this chapter is how do you predict what they're going to be when you look at a when you look at an equation can you make some guesses as to what the shapes will be and you'll see that yes you can make some make some very good educated guesses these are the five basic shapes that you're going to see um, not different numbers of, of um, things attached to the central atom but if you have one central atom and some things attached to it you could either have a linear which is a straight line where things are in a all uh, lined up you could have a triagonal planar where there all four of these uh, atoms are in the same plane um, with 120 degrees since it makes a circle around the central atom you could have what we looked at before a tetrahedral where you have 109.5 and it's all uh, there's four there's a uh, four uh, equilateral uh, triangles you can have some interesting kind of configurations where um, where the inside of this figure is a triangle planar and then you have uh, you have an atom coming straight out of the top and straight out of the bottom that's called triagonal bipyramidal because you're going to end up with you're going to end up with um, a three-sided pyramid on top and a three-sided pyramid on the bottom. And then you have an octahedral. An octahedral, um, you're going to have a four-sided pyramid on the top and bottom. And this is where you have 90 degrees in all directions, and you're going to have eight things attaching. So if you were to take a tetrahedral, and uh, start removing atoms from corners, you can get other three-dimensional shapes. So remember a tetrahedral is an equilateral triangle, um, one, two, three, four of them, so where it'd be like a jack, if you've ever played jacks, um, in, anywhere would be up, you could put them in any order and you'd have the same shape, same base, same top, but if you were to remove the top one, and replace it by um, a lone pair of electrons to where there's no bond there, you would have a different shape, a, tri a triagonal pyramidal, which is kind of a squat little stool. If you remove another atom off the corner, and in this case have two lone pairs, you have a bent molecule, and the bent molecule is going to be um, like water. Water would be bent. It has two sets of lone pairs, um, uh, ammonia, would be trigonal bipyramidal like NH3 so you can make some predictions of what these shapes are going to be based upon what where they are in the periodic table and and how how many that they have as they link up and what's the central atom